Linear Interpolate or LERP It's one of the most used nodes in materials. In this video, I'm gonna explain what it is, what it's used for, and how we can use it. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create these materials and most importantly, understand how they work. So let's do it. I've created a master material with all the functions necessary for your projects. You can download it for free on my website, link in the description below. Right click in the material graph and search for linear interpolate. It's one of those nodes that the title doesn't match its name. So wherever you see the lerp node, it's actually linear interpolate. We can right click and search for lerp and this node will pop up. Also we can hold L on the keyboard and left click to add it. Let's delete these two. It has three inputs and one output. We also have access to these constant inputs here in the details tab. We can connect other nodes to it. When we do that, the input on the node disappears and the input here becomes grayed out. This section here adds a description to the node in the material UI. So what does it do? It blends between two values based on a third value that's used as a mask. The A and the B inputs can be anything. Two constant or scalar values, constant 2, 3 or 4 vectors, or even texture samples. We only have to make sure to lerp between inputs with the same number of channels. For example, we can't lerp between a vector 2 and a vector 3. We'll get an arithmetic error. We can use the append or component mask node to make sure the inputs have the same number of channels. The only exception for this is when we have a simple constant or a scalar. In that case, the same value runs through all the channels, so we can lerp it with everything. The alpha input, which is the mask, defines the transition between the A and the B inputs. Let's disconnect this to see how it works. If alpha is 0, the first input is used. Right now, the first input is 0 or black. If I change the A input to 0.5, the final result will be 0.5 and if I connect this texture to the A input, it will be the final result. Now if I set the alpha to 1, the second input is used. In this case, it is 1 or white. Let's turn off auto exposure in here to better see the colors. If I change the B input, the final result will show it. If alpha is any value between 0 and 1, the output will be a blend between the two inputs. We can say that linear interpolate is a weighted average. When the alpha is 1, it shows the B input. As I start to decrease the alpha value, first it becomes a combination of the B and the A inputs weighted more towards B. Then the combination slowly becomes weighted more towards the A input. And finally, when I set it to 0, it becomes the A input. If you happen to set the alpha to 0.5, it gives us the exact average. For example, if the A input is 0.1 and the B input is 0.3, the output will be 0.2, which is the average. Let's set this constant to 0.2 and compare them. Add two constant three vectors, set them to red and blue, connect them like this. Now when the alpha is 0, it outputs red and when it's 1, it outputs blue. If I set it to 0.5, the result will be purple. Other values will give us different shades of red, purple and blue. I can also use a black and white texture as the alpha. Add a texture sample node, in here search for logo and add this Unreal Engine logo. It's included with the third person template. If you don't have it, click on the add button on the top left of the content browser and select add feature or content pack. After this window opens, select the third person template from the blueprint section and click on add to project. Let's open the texture. The black parts have a value of 0, so that's where the first input will be. The white parts have a value of 1, so that's where the second input will be. Now connect the texture to the alpha input. As you can see, where it's black on the alpha texture, the output will be red, and where it's white, the output will be blue. Let's add the noise texture from the starter content. Unlike the logo texture, which only has 0 and 1 values, the noise texture has fully white and fully black values, as well as different shades of grey. As a result, when I connect it to the alpha input, this is what we'll get. 
and it's all based on the different values of the noise texture. Where it's black or zero, it outputs red. Where it's white or one, it outputs blue. And other parts have different gray values, so it outputs different shades of red, purple, and blue. Let's add these two textures. Make some room and place them near the lerp. And connect the textures instead of the colors. We can see it better if I change the alpha to this logo. I can also lerp between a color and a texture. Remember, they have to have the same number of channels. Now I keep talking about an alpha value in the 0 to 1 range. But what if I use a value above 1? Or a value below 0? Before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. A linear interpolate is linear for a line between two values and interpolate for the alpha which is the location between those two values. You should always clamp the alpha value between 0 and 1. Doing it keeps the values from extrapolating and saturate is the cheapest way to do that. Let's slurp between this texture and this color. Move this back here for now. I'll add a scalar value and a saturate node. Name the scalar alpha. Connect them like this. Apply and save. Then assign it to this cube. Start changing the alpha value. You'll see that right now, no matter what the alpha value is, the output is okay. It only changes between the color and the texture. Well, that's because any value higher than 1 is clamped to 1, and any value lower than 0 is clamped to 0. If we didn't have this saturate node here, then it would start to extrapolate rather than interpolate. Now, as I increase it, the texture slowly breaks. The alpha value is above 1. It's like we've multiplied the B input or this texture by the 1 minus value of the color. And then multiplied it to the alpha value. It might seem crazy, but if I connect it, you can see that they're the same. Let's delete this for now. When I decrease it and set it to a negative value, the color keeps multiplying by the 1 minus value of this texture. Then multiplying by the alpha value. Alpha is minus 15, so I'll set it to 15. Right now it's only connected to the base color input, so it's not visible. But if I connect it to the emissive color input, it becomes evident. Let's compare them. Yeah, they're the same. But if I use the saturate node, it goes away. So always use saturate for the alpha. Or you'll regret it. We can use another multiply node before the emissive color input to control its intensity. Keep in mind that the blend happens per channel. We can use the color texture as the alpha to demonstrate that. For example, this hex texture. In this case, alpha's red channel defines the blend between the A and the B's red channels. The green channel defines the blend between the green channels. And the blue channel defines the blend between the blue channels. All of them are independent from the other ones. These channels will then blend to form the final result. Watch the component mask video if you are not familiar with channels. So now let's go over some examples. Add this grass texture and this noise texture from the starter content. Add a lerp node, connect the grass texture to A and connect the noise texture to the alpha input. Add a scalar parameter, name it brightness and set it to 1. Then add a multiply node, connect them like this and connect the multiply node to B. Finally, connect the lerp node to the base color. Apply and save. Then assign the material to the cube. By default, nothing happens. But if I decrease the brightness value, we'll start to see darker patches on the grass. This can be useful to break the tiling or make it look more natural. I can invert the alpha by adding a 1- node here. Or add a multiply, a power node and two scalars to better control it. Name them alpha brightness and alpha contrast. Set them both to 1 and don't forget to add a saturate node here.
connect them like this apply and save now i can use these parameters to change the way it looks let's do another example but before that i want to show you all these assets you can download for free on my website and you can use the donate button on the top to help me continue making them duplicate the material and open it delete this and add this brick texture from the starter content connect it to the base color i want to have more control over the roughness add two scalar values i'll name them roughness min and roughness max set the max to 1, connect them like this and preview the lerp node to see what is happening. We can see that it's representing the noise texture perfectly. The noise texture by itself is already a mix of values between 0 and 1. Let's say I want the texture to be a lot darker. I'm gonna take the max value which controls the white or the brighter parts and I'm gonna bring it down. Let's set it to 0.2 just to really show you what's going on. Turn the auto exposure off from here to better see what's happening. Now it's taking all the white values in the texture that are at 1 and it's converting them to 0.2. It's stretching all the values down to a darker value. I'm gonna connect it to roughness to see how it is affecting the material. Stop the preview for now. As you can see, the material is very reflective. It's because the roughness values are really low. Let's preview the lerp again. You could also do the inverse and make the material less dark or less reflective in the roughness channel. For that we should increase these values as we do that it becomes brighter and we get less contrast in the texture stop the preview to better see the material let's set the mean back to zero apply and save and assign the material to the cube now the bricks roughness is in the zero to one range based on this noise texture we can change these values to change the way the material looks or tweak these values to something crazy just to see what happens. We can also use animated textures as the alpha. Create a new material. Assign it to the cube and open it. Add two constant threes, this noise texture and the lerp node. Set the colors to blue and red, connect them like this and apply. Now add a panel node here, connect it to the UV's input on the noise texture, set the speed x value to 0.1 and apply. As you can see the texture starts to move. If your texture doesn't move, make sure real time is enabled in here. You can see that even though the texture is animated, it still defines where the A and the B inputs are. Lerp is one of the most important nodes, so watch the video again if you need to and create the materials to better understand it. And click here for more Unreal stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.